Stole rats. So I've been real busy since the last video, and that intro just kind of echoes some of what's been going on. I'll touch on some more flying as we take breaks throughout the uh, description of covering the fuselage. But those are just some of the highlights over the last couple weeks. All right, guys, so the servo bracket from Kitfox is in. Um, it fits up under this section. I'll show you how that fits here in a little bit. But let me show you what comes with the servo mount kit. I believe it was $365. I may be, it was 65 or 75, I can't remember. Um, pretty complete kit though. Let me show you what we got. First off, there are, um, there's a parts list and there are directions, which is great. So you have your pitch servo bracket, glue to mount that, pitch pull tube, rod ends, bolt that's a nice long bolt that's probably to um, connect your push-pull tube to the bell crank of the push-pull rod on the aircraft um, clamps to hold in place and some extra bolts and nuts and actually even a servo arm for the garmin servo um, looks pretty complete that's your pitch servo now on our roll axis servo, this is the mount. It's just a piece of angle aluminum. I'll have to drill that to uh, meet up with the mounting holes on the Grand Rapids servo. Push-pull tube, much shorter. Push-pull rod ends. Um, collar, that probably goes between the um, aircraft push-pull tubes and that one. Uh, bolt to mount that. Some uh, rivets to mount that. And the rest of your connectors. Um, so... Pretty complete set there. I also got my push-pull tubes that I was missing for the flapperons that mount from here up to the flapperon. Somehow those got missing uh, during the uh, life of this kit. It went through, I'm actually the third owner of the kit. First guy sold it, second guy, and it was just a fuselage kit. Second guy bought the wing kit. All this happened between 2016 and 2018. So it's a fairly new kit. It is from 2016. Wing was a uh, quick build from 2018. Um, but somewhere in the transition, either from the first owner to second owner, from the second owner to me, we lost those. So um, didn't quite need them yet, but I did realize that they were missing. Kit Fox had them on the shelf and sent them out. So all this stuff I ordered from uh, Heather and she had it here in three days. So thank you, Heather. Um, now I'm just waiting on the um, Grand Rapids servos, which are on their way. I think they ship today. So that'll be great. Once those are here, I can get that installed. Then we can move on to the fabric. So I'm excited about that. In that order, I also got the four bolts I was missing to properly mount the header tank. So that's going to go back in today. Um, I went ahead and did some more powder coating while I had the time. So I powder coated the pedals. Uh, I also did the flap and pedal reposition levers um, and got the console. That's all lined up. I showed you the flap thing in the last video. Tried a different color combination on the grips. I uh, don't like it as much. I like that one better. So, but just trying some stuff. Um, I did a set similar to this in blue for a guy, and uh, actually they came out really nice. Uh, I like the blue that way. So it, that's uh, something we could do. It's I don't really have... Um, a ton of these collars left um, to do custom collars. So what I ended up doing is getting um, pre-colored collars uh, made. And so I'll have, you can do like all black and then I'll have uh, gold, red, blue, white, and then black. So those will be your choices for the collars. So if you just want to do a collar accent, we'll be able to do that here. 
Uh, probably should get those in March. So stay tuned for some more examples of those. They'll be pretty, uh, pretty sharp looking, I think. Uh, let's see, what else we got going on? Uh, the baggage compartment, I, you notice I threw it back in here. And that's because I needed to solve this problem of how to mount the side of the um, baggage. So what I did, come around the other side, is I made up some aluminum tubing that's threaded on either end. And you may wonder, well, how do you thread aluminum tubing? And boy, doesn't that look a lot like an aero shaft? <laughs> so this is an aluminum aero shaft and the threaded end is just the normal threaded end that is on an arrow that allows you to change from a target tip to a broadhead or whatever. If you put the uh, tip in there, hit this with just the slightest bit of heat from a torch, like a propane torch, it releases the glue and you can pull it right out. Then you uh, get another one out of another arrow, cut the tubing to length, and then with a little bit of heat, reinsert that um, threaded tip, and then you have yourself a rod that has threads on either end, use another Dell clamp, clamp it in place, and the, that will run through this. This is already has a pocket in the, in the uh, fabric, and uh, that will hold it up just fine. So one of the things, though, is to be able to get it in and out, you have to undo one end, slide this out, slide the baggage, uh, you know, the material over it, and then out a little hole where it mounts, and then screw it in place. So it's kind of a tight area to get a screwdriver down in. I mean, you could pull back the rest of the fabric and get in there. It's probably doable, but I kind of had a different idea. So I got one of these uh, these little knobs, and I'm going to uh, basically cut the screw head off of this, flip it around, put the cut end into this high solid in place. And then what that will allow me to do is just use my hand to take that in and out. Just releasing one end of this rod will allow me to then undo the Velcro here and here and just slide the fabric out. So don't really plan on taking the baggage compartment in and out too much once the airplane's done. But I don't know how many times I'm going to have to do that while I'm mocking everything up. And the reason I'm a little concerned about this area here is um, that servo is going to be right here. So all I'd have to do is pull out this back piece of wood, undo the fabric there and there, un unscrew that knob, slide the fabric back, and then I'd have access to everything under there. I can check the servo. I can check the bell crank. There will be... All right, what I'm going to do is put an access hole in the fabric right here also. That allows me to get up in here, look, make sure my control cables are all good, um, and also uh, check on this bell crank and the servo. Okay, so that's kind of the progress today. Um, all right, so this is how the baggage support came out. And a Dell clamp, and a Dell clamp. Runs the rod runs through the fabric. A solid wall. It's good. Weighs practically nothing. For ounces. All right, guys. I'm gonna give you an update. I got the uh, servos in and the mounting plates. So um, I didn't really cover the installation because mostly I spent a lot of time figuring it out. Um, but here's the front roll servo. There's just a piece of aluminum angle that's riveted to the bottom plate. You probably see the rivets there through the bottom. That's the part that I need to get done, the uh, mounting of that angle before I could do the uh, fabric. Um, so that's in there. The problem I ran into is I don't have the right bolts to attach the servo to the uh, bracket. These need to be uh, head drilled and then safety wired in place. And I also have the uh, the grip and the shank are the wrong length on these. They're A and 3H-6As is what uh, they recommend. But that has the uh, part that's not threaded it is too long and so it bottoms out. So uh, Grand Rapids is sending me some uh, specific bolts to do that. So <clears throat> I did have to adjust the length. I still need to tighten down this compression nut here. 
but I did have to adjust the length of this uh, pitch pull uh, tube that came from Kit Fox. I cut an inch off to get an overall five and a half from eye bolt to eye bolt. And that was to prevent it from going over center. So you can see it goes right there. Before it would go a little bit further back because of the length of this, and then it would get stuck over center, and that's what you really want to avoid with the servo. I also mounted the push pull on the third bottom hole. So here's what the servo arm looks like. And I put it on the bottom hole um, just for the proper throw distance when moving the controls and keeping it from going over center. That's what worked best. So that's the roll servo. And then back here, not quite done with the um, pitch servo. I've got it temporarily clamped in place. These clamps stay, but I do need to put high saw underneath uh, to glue that down. Let me come around the other side and I'll show you basically how that mount works. <clears throat> All right, so again, I put it on the bottom hole and the push pull tube is moved. You can see the servo moves with it. And then that's full back, keeps it from going over center. Over center would be if it went past that to there. Now you're stuck. Your controls are, are stuck right there. That would totally screw you for pitch. So you want to prevent that. <clears throat> so my full aft position is there. I still may lengthen that just a little bit, but the problem is when you go forward now, all the way forward, you're getting real close to contacting the uh, the nut with the pitch pull, but I can lengthen this just a little bit more to, to really protect from that over center. And again, that's at full throw. There aren't that many times when you're going um, full control, it's possible. But anyway, so um, again, these bolts need to be replaced with the proper ones with the drilled head, and there'll be two more down at the bottom to hold that servo in. Um, on the back, let's see if I can get to it here. You put a longer bolt in right here and it's got this little spacer and that just helps line up the pitch pull um, tube with the servo head. Um, so that hardware was provided by Kit Fox. This bracket and the pitch pull um, with the rod ends was all part of that autopilot servo mounting kit. So those are pretty much in. Unfortunately, I have to wait for those bolts. Um, but I think coming through the baggage compartment and getting at those bolts, I mean, I'll have to climb in there, but I think that's something I can go ahead and just figure I'll do it after the covering's done. Um, so I'll glue that in, get it done, and then I think we're ready to cover. The only other thing I'm going to tackle real quick, um, because I want to try to put as many holes through everything as I can prior to putting the fabric on. And that is I got a comm antenna. And that comm antenna is going to be mounted right here. So I'll go ahead and drill the holes out to mount that comm antenna prior to putting the fabric on also. Um, so that's the two things I need to accomplish today. Um, I also do need to run, um, I'm gonna do another uh, bit of this conduit right here um, from the servo up to the front um, to run the servo um, wiring harness, which again, from Grand Rapids, part of the kit right there. Um, so nice long length of wire. It's got the plug there. Um, already made up on that end and then the plug that goes into the EFIS. So I'll go ahead and you know put that wire back to the servo. Again that will be easier to do prior to putting the fabric on. So that's the update. Looks like I got a phone call. So I can't figure out how to build this damn airplane. I need a professional to show up and help me out. <laughs> What's happening? How's it going? A little assistance on the build. Yeah. 
All right, so didn't get as much done today as I was hoping, kind of the way it usually goes, but uh, I think I'm about ready to lay the fabric down. Uh, I've got the antenna mount drilled and ready. Uh, I did run, made up a uh, BNC connector and ran the cable. Got it zip tied in place there, guns down, and we're putting this conduit and ran the uh, servo wire and the the uh, coaxial through that up to the front and all that wiring is running up and going to go up under the panel got the second servo and wiring on that is also in place uh, I still need to connect it all down to the tubing but I'll do that once it's uh, already covered inside so pretty much think I've got all the wiring I need in place from the cockpit to the tail at least I hope so. So there shouldn't be anything else that I need to gain access for from the uh, basically the seat aft inside the frame. So that means we're ready to cover. Uh, I was hoping to lay the fabric today. Uh, some things came up. I had an appointment with the accountant and also there was a, another airplane for sale that uh, me and a buddy wanted to go check out. So went and took a look at that. Um, not from for me, uh, just something we were looking at. So anyways, um, that's about all I got done today was, which, you know, it took longer than, than I, I thought. Uh, the plate is now, or the bracket for the servo is now glued and mounted in place. Um, all the linkage is done on the servo, both servos. Uh, brackets are all mounted and the wiring's run. So... I think that was everything I needed to do um, prior to putting the cover on. The coaxial cable with the BNC connector was something I had forgotten. And I could run that, could have run that later since it's you know in that baggage area I created. Um, but I went ahead and, and put that in now. So um, I'll just pop that through the hole. This will get fabric and I'll cut that hole and then I can stick that up to the antenna. So that should be good to go. Uh, yeah, that's about it. I mean, I think, I think we're, uh, ready to lay the fabric tomorrow morning. So I'm gonna get up and get at it early. All right, it's go time. We're gonna cover this thing. So I'm gonna, uh, set up the cameras so I can do it hands off the camera and get going. Um, but we're gonna, I got the fabric cut. I'm gonna go ahead and glue, put all the glue down where it needs to go, throw the fabric on and get that thing done. Hope to have the main fabric on by the end of the day, and then tomorrow we can tape it. So, let's get this thing done. Okay, so my original plan was to do the bottom and then all the way up over the left side all in one piece. <clears throat> and I talked to a couple friends that have done it. They didn't really ever think of doing that. Um, the piece is big enough. The problem I'm running into is the change in angle in the fuselage right here creates a ton of slack in the fabric. Um, and I just don't think I'm gonna be able to get this crease out and with, without creating a distortion. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and abandon that idea. So I went ahead and marked um, the fabric with a pencil where I need to cut it. And then I'll go over that with some thin poly tack, let it dry and then cut that. And I'll still use the same piece. Um, I'll just move it so it overlaps the bottom like you're supposed to.
Okay, so the bottom's on. It hasn't been shrunk yet. The seam on the side, on the, the bottom portion of the side, is on and glued and drying. Had some frustration with that. So I laid it out and then I cut it. And then when I worked my way down the line, it didn't come out right. And so I had to peel it off and then move the whole fabric and start over. So here's my tip on that. Um, lay it over so you have plenty over the edge and glue down just the seam, just right where it touches the bar. Let that dry. Make sure you have a nice, um, as wrinkle-free layout of the fabric as you can. Then go in and mark your line and cut it like I've done here. Nice consistent edge the whole length after it's been glued in place so you don't end up with the, the, the line not following the curvature. There's a pretty drastic change in the uh, angle of the fuselage when you're looking at it from the side. And I didn't account for that. I laid it out with a very straight line. And so when I got to the end, the fabric kind of crawled up and I was short. And that's a bad place to be short because you, you can't pull it in. It created wrinkles. So I kind of had to redo the side after doing that. So um, my lesson learned there is give yourself plenty of hang, hang over on the fabric, glue it into place, then cut it for your nice straight seam before you uh, wrap it and glue it over the edge. Um, so hopefully that helps you guys. I'm definitely gonna use that technique going on the other side. So um, back at it. All right, so I'm on the left side, which will complete getting the fabric on the fuselage. I've got the uh, bottom edge already glued and done. So I just got to cut the back side and then glue it down. Uh, I've been at it since about eight this morning. It's three. My son just got home. Beautiful day. And there's a friend of mine down in Red Bluff who may fly his new plane for the first time. So we're going to take a little break fly down there and check it out. So um, my, my plan is to make sure that this fabric is fastened all the way around. Everything's on by the end of tonight. So when I get back, I will be in here doing this until it's done. All right, so we flew down to Red Bluff to see Baja Joe fly his uh, Monster Cub, which is a experimental version of a PA-12 with a 0360 with a constant speed on it, 35 inch uh, Alaska Bush wheels running the Behringer wheels that he got through bow and arrow. And uh, this was his first flight. He had an all day inspection with the designated airworthiness representative, got it signed off, had a couple squawks to fix, and then he took it out and flew it for the first time. And we were able to be there to witness it. And it gave me a good sense of what I have to look forward to. So it was a great event to go down and be a part of. Uh, it kind of gives me motivation to get going on mine.
All right, cool flying adventure. Got to take my son out flying. I'll put in the little clip of Joe flying the monster cub for the first time. It was really cool. And we made it back uh, just after sunset. Had some dinner. Now I'm going to get back to work on the fabric. So I'll set up the time lapse, get going. All right, guys, I'm shutting down the time lapse. A 12 hour day, although I did take about two hours to go fly down to Red Buff, but 12 hours, we've got the fabric on the fuselage. I haven't shrunk it yet, but all the fabric is on, except for the top of the tail. Oh, it's probably, I don't know if I have it in me. I'd probably go ahead and do it tonight, but I need to trim um, the area around the tail. All this comes out, so I'm gonna let the glue dry before I do that. And uh, now I'll cut that out, probably shrink down all this area before I put the covering on the top. And I actually have to take it off of the rotisserie to wrap it around the back. I'll take that back um, square tubing that I have that I'm mounted to off, put it on a sawhorse and do the tail portion. So long day. Um, I learned a couple little tricks that you know made the second side go easier. I covered them earlier about letting it hang over and glue down the edge before you cut it. Um, that worked a lot better. It's starting to look like a plane. You know, I've got some wings over there and a fuselage over here. Yeah, you know, yeah, you guys can tell. I'm I'm pretty exhausted. So signing off for the night. See you tomorrow. Alright guys, so I'm gonna wrap this one up and end it with some of the flying clips from last weekend. We had a great time out uh, flying around in the Northern California area and I came up with this idea to do a bottle cap challenge. Um and my buddy Jake, the legend, uh he ended up First try, knocking the cap off the bottle. You guys might have seen this in Trent's new video. Uh, I'll put a link to his video. as kind of a better recollection of the whole uh, weekend uh, flying. But uh, here's the clips I got, and uh, I want to share them with you guys. I should do a dedicated video, but Trent did a much better job than I can, so I'll leave it at this. See you on the next one. Trent's going forward out of your guys' way. I'll just overfly you and uh, just make my hand better. Okay. 
So is there three of you in that group? There is. We're low. Three low. I got gotcha. you. Bryce is on a half mile final. Hi, I'm Brian with Bow and Arrow LLC. And we're a dealer for Behringer Brake Systems. If you guys are looking to put one of these outstanding, lightweight braking systems on your airplane, give me a call at 541-840-7400, or you can email me at bowandarrow at yahoo.com. And I'll take a look at your specific airplane application, get you a quote, and then we can figure out what's best for you guys moving forward putting one of these systems on your plane. So give me a call, and let's get these brake systems on your plane.